women are refusing to work. So Gen Z, you know, this is a generation of good for nothings. I've talked about them a lot, my disdain for them. But you have a lot of them, especially the young, you know, the, the young women in the generation. They're making it clear that a lot of them don't want to work or they think that they're entitled to something compared to, you know, Gen X, who was the first walk away generation. You know, they were literally like, yeah, man, life's too short. Let's jump into the first video. Gen Z, my generation, I think is honestly the worst generation. I just got off work. I'm in my car and I'm scrolling and I see yet again another girl in my generation crying about how she doesn't want to work. Now, don't get me wrong. I know inflation is crazy, and I know that jobs aren't paying you as much as they should to keep up with inflation. However, everyone needs to work an eight-hour day, five days a week. That's literally life, okay? I think the problem with my generation stems from everyone started working a lot later than other generations previously. I started working when I was 14, but a lot of people my age didn't start working until they finished college, honestly. And I think that's a big problem. So I think part of it is like, they're not used to working, but everyone works eight hour days, five days a week, full time. That's how it is. And life isn't fair. So if you're my generation watching this, just get a job. Now here's what's interesting. She says, life isn't fair. This is what Gen X knew very well. Do you guys really think that Gen X would raise their children, a generation that grew up knowing that life isn't fair, would raise their children telling them that everything is, is going to be handed to you? Oh, Gen X didn't do a good enough job raising Gen Z. Gen X did not raise Gen Z. Social media raised Gen Z. Gen X knows better. I mean, Gen Z knows better. They are rotten human beings. Let's look at this, this post from a Gen Xer. He says, Gen X here, this was on a comment that I made. This was on a comment, this is a comment he made on a video that I made titled, Young Women Are Passing While Gen X Is Thriving. Now we know that, you know, Gen Z women now have the lowest lifespan in, in, uh, in the world at this, well, in the Western society at this point. They are passing away at the average age of 25 years old. So Gen Z women and young millennial women, they're passing away faster than everyone else, even faster than Gen Z men. And single men, single, especially single, never married men are now having the longest lifespans in the world. So this Gen Xer says, and his name is Brian, he said, Gen Xer here, born in 70, raised by my grandparents, which is something very important. Because a lot of Gen Xers, they had their grandparents and their grandparents instilled wisdom into them and decency into them. He says, the country today is in the crapper and not done. Gonna get worse. Amen to that. I was a kid that had his own key to the house so that when I got home from school, could let myself in. After that, it was do your homework, fix yourself something to eat, clean the dishes, watch TV for a while, then shut everything off and be in bed by 9 p.m., 10 p.m. if it was a Friday. Guys, I remember growing up, you know, there was no luxury. I would come home from school. There was no one there. There was no one there. I'd have to fix food for myself, food for my siblings. You know, when my when my uh, mother had my younger younger siblings, change diapers. All right. That's if that's if anyone was there. Prepare, you know. You know, uh, I mean, take care of myself, get in the shower, wash my butt, you know, clean my teeth, do my homework. So my, you know, television, my father, used, he would just cut the cord off the TV. So growing up, a lot of times we didn't even have television. Forget about cable. Right. And that was life. They hated comic books. No comic books for you. You know, go read the Bible. And this was life. And I grew up in New York City. New York City was a dangerous place. New York City in the 80s and the and the early 90s, it was really, really dangerous. Really, really dangerous. We had that, we had that uh C-R-A-C-K epidemic. That thing was no joke. 
that thing was no joke. A lot of people like to say that that specific epidemic, you know, disproportionately affected the black community, bro. There was a whole lot of homeless white people in the 80s that were affected by that epidemic. Whole lot of homeless white people. Okay? To this day, I have never seen more homeless white people than during that that epide- during that period of time in the 80s, the early 90s. It was a living nightmare. And my gosh, I grew up in that. I grew up in that. It was frightening. There were people who lived around around me and they passed away. People by age or, or a little older than me. And it was just, it, you just had to suck it up and move on. And, you know, there's a, my parents were very, very, you know, shysty. You know, they were not very kind people. Not very, very kind people. And we basically took what we had and we rolled with it. And yeah, I remember like, you know, when I was growing up, my arm got slit open. Like, you know, I got a huge cut on my arm. No hospital for you. Nope. Mom just put some, rubbed some ointment on it, bandage, bandage it up. And uh, you better be in school and, and you better get to bed and you better be in school in the morning. And that was it. That was it. Didn't feel well. Ah, too bad you're going to school. Like, like this is the truth. Didn't feel well. Too bad you're going to school. Like when I was growing up, everyone, everyone went to school sick. You think you're gonna stay home and watch television? And if you, and if you were staying home, there was no TV, because they made sure to make your life a living hell if you stayed home. Like it was so bad that you. It was so bad growing up. That staying home basically meant that you know it was it was just an unhappy time you would want to you would rather go to school sick than stay home with mom because it was it was nothing to do it was just miserable okay and if you got sick you better learn how to take care of yourself you have two hands you can wash some dishes you can get yourself a cup of tea you're seven years old what they would call child neglect today you know that was just normal times for us he says so let's continue on so brian says was i overly emotional slash touchy feely nope didn't mean that i didn't care just that i wasn't hard on (laughs) i wasn't hard on you heart i wasn't hard on your sleeve emotionally incapacitated did i get my butt warmed when when i screwed up yeah buddy Guys, this is something, this, again, it was a whole different, je- it's a whole different thing. It's like, it's amazing. It's amazing how, how society has crumbled. He says, and each and every time I got my butt busted, I was informed why it was happening. And I'd be the first to admit it was warranted. I was also taught to respect my elders. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. To this day, I'm 41 years old. If I'm dealing with a police officer, yes, sir, no, sir. It doesn't matter if, he, if he's 18, 19, 20, 21. Yes, sir, no, sir. When I'm dealing with authority, yes, sir, no, sir. It is, I, you know, I, I went to, I went to, it's so crazy. I went to pick up some medicine not too long ago. And I walk up to the counter and there's a guy at the counter. And obviously he's younger than me. And my, and he asked, he's asking me questions. I'm like, yes, sir, no, sir. And it's just, so ingrained in me and it just caught me like oh this guy's a kid and here i am yes sir no sir just because that's what you were conditioned that's how you were conditioned yes sir no sir you'd be amazed you would be amazed how far manners can take you in the world you have to have common sense don't allow don't allow someone to entrap you or take advantage of you but you would be amazed what having manners can get you out of guys i'll tell you a story i remember once I was driving and I used to study this stuff, like like how to get out of police, how to get out of you know tickets. And one of the things that you learn is you want whenever a police officer pulls you over, you want to be the nicest, most compliant. You know, don't, again, don't let don't say don't don't volunteer to let them go through your 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 trunk or anything. But yes, it's but you want to be as nice as possible, especially if you know you're in the wrong. 
But regardless, you get pulled over, you want to be as polite as possible. Because the reason why is the police officer, they always remember the bad people. They always remember the nasty people. They don't remember the nice ones. So one day I'm driving, and was I going a little past the speed limit? Probably. And I get pulled over, and the cop who pulls me over, he pulls me over, and he starts screaming at me. He was a, a trooper. Do you know how fast you were going? Oh, how fast was I going, sir? Do you know what the speed limit is? Could you please tell me what the speed limit is, sir? So he's looking at me, and he's furious. He's furious. And he comes, he goes, he walks back to his car, he grabs a ticket, hands it to me, you know, gets my license, takes my license, gets gives me a ticket. He's, and he says, you're going to have to go here and here and here. I said, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Dude looked at me with fury and rage in his eyes. Dude looked at me so angry. Got in his car, slammed the door, sped off. I go to court. Doesn't show up. <laughs> doesn't show up. This wasn't the first time it happened. I've used that strategy multiple times. And the cop just never shows up. You see, manners will get you everywhere in the world. They remember the bad people. And the people who are decent, respectful, you don't always get away. but. Matters will get you very far in this world. I'll tell you something. When I was homeless, there was this guy that was messing around. There was this Asian guy that was messing around, fooling around. And, you know, the, uh, this guy, you know, one of these, these they're kind of like, they're like pseudo cops. And he comes in and he comes in and he basically, uh, he basically says, to, you know, he says to, to the guy, to one of the guys, what's going on in here? What's going on here? And you know what? And the guy who's who's being an idiot, he starts saying, oh, you know, just uh, we're just, you know, we're just having some some fun. We're talking, horsing around. And you know what he says? And it, there's a there's this black guy and the black guy that he's messing with. And he's like, the black guy's like, stop, stop. So listen. The guard, the uh, the. Uh, Cop, he goes, he goes, and this, and they, you know, they can arrest you. He goes, well, he goes, well, I know it's not this man over here. I know it's not this man over here, pointing at the black guy, because he says this guy doesn't mess with anyone. I know this guy; he doesn't mess with anyone. He keeps his nose clean, which means I know it has to be you. Knowing how to control yourself, knowing how to be respectful, knowing how to carry yourself, it leaves an impression on people. It's a very important thing. Gen Z doesn't understand this concept because Gen Z, they're a bunch of good-for-nothing idiots. Good. That's why they're aging rapidly, burning the candle at both ends. I worry about Gen Beta, the children of Gen Z, because, you know... Gen Z is they're kind of like the boomers. They're very much like the boomers. Boomers were not very nice people. They were not very nice people, you know. And you can tell Gen Z is going to be the same. They're very, very money focused and very, very money hungry. Their entire life revolves around money. <laughs> and you could see it written all over them. That's why they're that's one of the reasons why they're aging so rapidly. And then there's also the you know, the uh, you know, the, the terrible lifestyles they live, the food that they eat. The makeup, all of that stuff. I mean, it's and then it's it, it's just them in general. It's the lifestyle in general. They, that's why they look so old. But when you look at things, when you just look at it overall, Gen Z is a crap generation, and you can you compare them to other generations, and you see that they're very very money focused, like the boomers, but they're greedy. And just like the boomers were not very kind people to their kids, Gen Z is not going to be very kind to their kids. You can already see things like, you can see it manifesting. Gen Z, like, they're the biggest victims of the world. And just like the boomers used to sit around saying that they had to walk all these miles to school barefoot, lying bastards, you know, 
they, and when you find out what their actual childhoods were like, they were so privileged. They were the most privileged generation in history. You, you look at Gen Z and you could see that Gen Z is going to l- literally be extremely cheap when it comes to their kids. They're not going to take proper care of their kids. They're going to be very paranoid when it comes to be comes to spending money on their children because they're more focused on themselves. So instead of investing in their children, they're going to be f- primarily focused on investing in themselves and keeping as much money of as much money for themselves as possible. Gen Z is already targeting social security. While millennials have been told for ages, there will be no social security for you. You need to figure it out. And most Gen Xers are basically like, well, if I get it, I get it. But if they take it away, then oh, well, you know, it is life. You know, the Zoomers, they want that social security. The Zoomers are so jealous of the boomers. Like these, how are you jealous of the boomers? When it's like, I, bro, you're it's you're far removed from the boomers, far removed from the boomers, and you y'all are nostalgic about the childhood of the boomers, bro. That was like in nineteen. We're talking about like nineteen forties, with a nineteen forty through forty six through nineteen. The boomer years are what nineteen forty, nineteen forty six, I think, through nineteen sixty four. So they were. It was an eighteen year, eighteen year. Uh, period of time and gen z is jealous of what the boomers had like this is a group of scumbags they're a real group of scum real real group of scumbags i need more time off for christmas tell me how can this be Adulting is not for me. And she can't even sing. Let's be real. That was a horrible rendition. But that, that's another that's another Gen Z. And look how old they look. They look so terrible. They look so old. Adulting is not for me. It's just one video after another video after another video of these people breaking down in their car saying they don't want to be adults. They don't want to do adulthood. You know? I mean, you compare the millennials are just weepy, but at least the millennials show up for work and they get, they get the job done versus Gen Z. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. So if we turn to um, slide number four, I've actually got quite a lot going on and I'm a bit overwhelmed at the moment. So I'm gonna take some time off just to kind of realign, reassess and kind of focus on myself. That's that's Gen Z for you. That's millennials versus Gen Z. Millennials, they cry through it and then get it done. Gen Z, bro, bro, Gen Z, Gen Z, look, look at them, dude. It says this with a straight face, straight face. Yeah, so this isn't working for me, Chief. This isn't working for me. I'm just gonna, yeah, I, I'm gonna, I gotta go. I gotta go. You know, I, I gotta focus on myself and my my own well being. And this nine to this this nine to five thing, it's just it's just not working out. It's just not working out. And uh, yeah, I understand that you you talked about possibly you know working with me on the schedule, but just this whole working thing in general is not working out. So, <laughs> bro, bro, I hope I, I, I when these people are homeless, man, when these people are homeless, like everyone is just like it's it's it'll be a, like. People will literally be out there like they'll see homeless Gen Zers like I hope you starve. I hope you starve. You, like that's the attitude. You bastards. You bastards. Oh my gosh. And some people are like, well, listen, this they're having a hard time getting jobs. The most humbled I've ever felt in my life. I'm literally holding resumes, a stack of them, so that I can go in person to places and say, are you guys hiring? It's honestly a little bit embarrassing because I'm literally applying for like minimum wage jobs. This is not what I expected. I graduated college with two degrees in communications and acting. I speak three languages. This sucks. Like, I I just want to be a TikToker if I'm being so for real with you. 
Yeah, well, maybe you should have got a degree that was in in demand. I'm not saying that communications and acting aren't good, but uh, that's not really a hard skill. Maybe you should have considered trade school. Just saying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, t- I, t- I tell you. I tell you. You know, and like I said, going back to what Brian was saying here, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Got my washed out, got my mouth washed out with soap when I use language that wasn't copastic slash good to go. Seeing that w- seeing what is happening today with the country, I am shaking my head and asking myself, what the H E double hockey sticks was I thinking doing 10 years in the military? Made the sacrifices and the country still went to crap anyway. Sadly, I did the math with today's America that I did with the U.S. military and came up with the same answer. Want to move up, improve, have a better life or future? Get out. Guys, I, I, I called this 10 years ago. 10 years ago, men would be, I called it a video, men leaving the West. I predicted it. Men will begin walking away from Western society, and there will be women who will try to follow them overseas. Because, guys, here's what's going to end up happening. These passport kings right now are modern day they're they're modern day explorers they're laying the groundwork for the for everyone else because you know regardless of what you want to call it globalization is happening and a part of that is is will be people moving leaving western society and using western society only to make their money while living in other countries and investing in other countries because america is way too expensive to live in America is a federal corporation, and that's how that's what's happening with many different countries around the world today. They are becoming federal, or they have become federal corporations, and these are not places to live. This is these are these are not places to live. They're not places to raise children. These places are soulless, and the the only thing that you can really do is make your money and leave. I bet better yet, if you're able to work remotely, work remotely. Build a business. You know, this young woman, she's crying about not being able to find a job. She has two degrees, one in communications, another in acting. And it's like, bro, I don't feel so sorry for you. You know, and I don't feel so sorry for you at all. When I was, you know, and this is something that a lot of the millennial and, and, and younger Gen Xers know, you know, back when the economy went to hell, we were on like, you know, people, like those of us were on like career builder, indeed, like literally sending off like 100, 200, 300 resumes. Guys, we were like sending in like 100, like 50 to 100 resumes a day, 50 to 100 resumes a day, going around applying for minimum wage jobs with degrees in like biostatistics and engineering. Okay. And that, and, and it was like, and, and basically, you just took what you could. You, just, you took what you, you took what you could get. You had a lot of people with law degrees that were being offered minimum wage. And it's like, oh, we we need to we need to fight and change the system. And what people don't have don't understand is that th- this the economy has to work itself out. When people say, yeah, enough is enough, that's when things change. You know. Sometimes it takes time for things to catch up. But, you know, if you want, if you're demanding like, oh, some things be handed to you, what you're really fighting for is socialism. And that's what most Gen Zers want. You know, I made a, a post, I made a poll where I said that if if reparations were being handed out, you know, uh, the lines, the lines would be uh, white liberals would be lining up to get their cut. And it was something like between 80 and 90 percent of people agreed. Like it was overwhelming in agreement. Yeah. Like there were some there were some conservatives even said like white conservatives who said like, yeah, I'll be on there and get my cut, too. I was like, brother, you can't be. A, listen to me. I, I fall for this country. I'm going to get my cut. And it's like it's just it's sad, but it's the reality of it. You know, these people, they want socialism. You know, I've always I've said this plenty of times that when you see these, you know, these young white liberals fighting out here fighting out here for so-called minorities they're not fighting for you they're fighting for themselves because any because they'll be the first ones lined up on the welfare line they'll be the first ones lined up to get a cut of whatever's there 
That's that's really how it is. They're not fighting for you. They're fighting for themselves. Okay, and you know, let's just. I'm just gonna be a little funny for a moment. While a lot of black people, a lot of black guys, you know, they say they work on was it black people time. You know, you know, they're not waking up. And, and don't get me wrong, these liberal, these white liberals are not a lot better. But I will tell you this right now: a lot of these guys, a lot of the white liberals, they'll they'll camp out if they start handing out reparations. These people will be camped out a week in advance, like a new PlayStation is coming out. They'll be camped out a week in advance, like a new PlayStation is coming out to get their cut. To get their cut, they will be the first ones on the line. They will be cut. They will be the first ones on the line, and they'll also be cutting the line. Guys, I want to remind you also that I have another channel called Angry, where I discuss gaming, anime, geek stuff, nerd stuff, real world stuff. And whatever else interests me, you can find a link to it in the description of the video. Go check it out. Support my content. Subscribe to the channel. I also have another channel called Men Walking Away. And if you're enjoying the content on this channel, you can go over to Men Walking Away to find even more content like the content that you'll find on this channel. Links to that, links to Men Walking Away and to Angry are to the Angry channel are in the description of the video. What do you guys think about all of this? Women are refusing to work. You have these Gen Zers you know, young Gen Z women crying on social media because they don't want to work, you know, because they didn't. And it's amazing. They all like to watch Friends, but it's like they learn nothing from the same song. Like, life's not always going to go your way. Like, bro, it's right in the song. It's right in the song. Okay? Things are not always going to go your way. And they learn, and they still learn nothing. They still learn nothing. Like, think about it. Their favorite, one of their favorite shows is a is a show about Gen Xers, you know, dealing with life and looking at the ups and downs of life and seeing that life doesn't always go the way you, you want it to. And there's going to be a lot of pit holes in between and unemployment and struggles, and you just get real. You basically roll with the punches, and they learn literally nothing from it. They just graduate. They just like they're like, oh my gosh, Phoebe is so cute. And they're like, okay, time to go watch some of the go watch the Kardashians. Did you did you see what happened with Chloe? Oh my gosh, she looks good, doesn't she? It has to be that Ozempic. Guys, let me know what you guys think about what's about this. Women are refusing to work. I want to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers. <laughs>